Hey everyone, welcome to the Democrat series. We're going to do uh, all the Democratic people who are running for president. We've done a lot of them so far and it seems that every single time I do this, the notes just keep getting longer and longer. So let's try to see if I can get this in under 41 minutes, shall we? The Democratic debates, uh, the first two that are randomly assorted happening on Wednesday and Thursday on the 26th and 27th, which means that uh, things could change quite a bit. A lot of numbers could shift because instead of just going off name recognition, now there's actually going to be like an actual campaign. Uh, this is huge. And it also means that we could see uh, some people who did not see their numbers come up, maybe disappear from the race. People who are polling at about 1% who are anticipating that their campaign will continue because they'll do so well at the debates. Uh, that's not looking like it's likely to happen. Then they'll drop out, especially if donor money starts drying up because they can't pull their numbers up after the debates. So the debates are huge and a lot of big things are happening, but the debates are not the subject of this video. They're probably the subject of a future video. Today, we're going to talk about the fourth most popular candidate in the Democratic race so far. Senator Kamala Harris. She first came on my radar about a year after the 2016 election because a lot of the big donors and big nonprofits that donated to the Clinton campaign were rallying behind uh, Kamala Harris when she was just thinking about running for president. There was a lot of fundraisers for her Senate campaign and such that has her very highly tied to uh, the Clinton uh, money bags, especially the California based ones. Now let's begin in the beginning. Uh, Kamala was born in Oakland, California in 1964. Both of her parents are very highly educated. Her mom is a breast cancer scientist who immigrated from India and her father is an economist who immigrated from Jamaica. She was also very close with her maternal grandfather who was an Indian diplomat and spent a lot of her summers with her extended family in the province of Tamil Nadu in India. I just have to mention that because Tamil Nadu is a, is a meme for anybody who is a regular of the streams. You should watch my streams. She was definitely a child of two cultures, both a regular attendant of a Baptist church, predominantly black Baptist church, and a Hindu temple. And then when Kamala Harris was seven years old, her parents divorced and custody over the children was given to the mother who then moved to Montreal. Yeah, she actually was a teacher at McGill. So she spent a lot of her childhood in Canada. That's kind of cool. She then went back to the United States to do her post-secondary education. She went to Howard, which is a historically black college. She has a lot of love for the historically black colleges. I mean, what's not to love? And she was also a very active undergraduate student, both being a first year representative in student council, a member of the debate team, and a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. Post post-secondary, she went and got a Juris Doctor from the University of California at Hastings. She became a lawyer and entered the state bar in 1990. So the first nine years of her life she spent as a deputy district attorney for the county of Alameda. The job of a district attorney is basically to represent the United States in courts and in crimes that involve the United States. So if you ever see a crime where it's like, name the United States, a district attorney is usually the person representing the United States. But she quickly was interested in pursuing a career in law enforcement. She wanted to quote unquote, be at the table where decisions were made. And things did change for her when in 2000, the elected city attorney of San Francisco, Louise Wren, picked her up and recruited her as a member of her team. Specifically the community and neighborhood division, which covers things like civil matters. By 2003, she was the district attorney for San Francisco. And a lot of the controversy that people have around Kamala Harris has to do with the time that she spent as a district attorney. Uh, the first story that came up that was a big kind of controversial moment of her career was in 2004 when a police officer was shot and Kamala Harris decided that she was not going to pursue the death penalty for the person responsible. At the officer's funeral, a senator and former mayor of San Francisco, Dianne Feinstein, literally asking her to seek the death penalty on stage while she was sitting there in the first row. 
Dianne Feinstein's not a good politician. But yes, this totally normal group of cops responded in a very normal way by giving a standing ovation for Dianne Feinstein's call for blood. But uh, yeah, Kamala Harris actually refused, even still, and gave him life in prison instead. We're gonna go back and forth over good things she did versus bad things she did. It's very mixed. She did a lot of things that seemed rather cruel. She did a lot of things that were kind of progressive, but she seems to always dodge when people bring up the more questionable parts of her professional career in this position. Like one example is that in 2005, she received a memoranda from her staff that would require the district attorney's office to send a written explanation for police misconduct to defendants, uh, something that she refused to act upon. But then she also put forward programs like the Back on Track program, which was an idea to take non-gun related, non-gang related, non-violent criminals, and instead of putting them in prison, that if they pled guilty, they could actually, in exchange for something like community service, uh, get reintegrated back into society instead of going to prison. People who participated in the program would have to do something like go get their GED or go to parenting classes, maintain steady employment, things like that, and then they could graduate and put this criminal past behind them. There were less than 300 graduates of said program, so there was a lot of dropout, but the recidivism rate of those who did graduate was extremely low. It was considered a major success and the state passed a law based on it and recommended that counties around the country try something similar. One of the controversies that came up about this program is that it used to apply to people who were illegal immigrants, but uh, as soon as that became a controversy, she folded instantly and decided to bar them from said program. So while she was trying to keep people out of prison with this program, she then started another program, which was this anti-truancy program. And this was designed to make parents make sure their kids go to school. And one of the things they did was threaten to send their parents to prison. Sorry, jail, there is a distinction. Which, you know, getting another pipeline to putting people in prison, that's 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 always good in a country that has a full 1% of its population behind bars. And then when asked about this program, she kind of laughs about it and talks about how it was controversial. And then even told a story about how parents would scold their children saying that Kamala Harris would put them in prison if they, did, if they skipped more school. It's not exactly the best tack now, is it? And she had even been floated as the potential first female president as early as 2009. The New York Times published an article about her. And around the same time, she published a book about the Back on Track program. So yeah, there was a little bit of buzz that she might run as early as 2016. Her term as district attorney also resulted in a lot of things that district attorneys are supposed to do, but are kind of morally questionable. Uh, she oversaw a massive increase in the conviction rate of crimes uh, all across the board and also a big increase in plea bargains, which means that as a state prosecutor, she was definitely prosecuting. The SFPD was really happy with her. She did a lot of things like closing loopholes that defendants could use to not go to prison and all sorts of things. So she was making it uh, much harder to avoid prison. Uh, that's 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 just not, that's not good. There was also a case in 2012 where she was reprimanded by the state Supreme Court for basically violating defendants rights because she hid damaging information about police misconduct from the court. One of the good things that Colin Harris did actually had to do with hate crimes. She actually put together a hate crimes unit that tried to help uh, especially LGBTQ plus uh, teenagers, but uh, specifically about hate crimes related to LGBTQ plus people. She organized a national conference to try and put an end to the gay transgender panic defense that was occurring, where people were able to talk their way out of a prison sentence for murder because they could claim that they were not in the right mind and work their way down to manslaughter for uh, claiming that they freaked out when they found out that the person that they were about to have sex with was trans. Uh, and also if they thought a gay person was coming on to them that they could have not been in the right mind and get their murder uh, moved down to manslaughter. That's 
uh, one super fucked up part of American criminal law. And the fact that Kamala Harris was putting some effort to shut that down, um, that's good. You can also remember that during that time, Kamala Harris was a uh, district attorney. This was also when California was going over a whole bunch of laws about whether or not it was going to let gay people get married. I'm sure many Californians remember Proposition 22 and Prop 8. Uh, and she opposed both of those. She then moved on from district attorney to California's attorney general in 2011. Should point out that when she was elected to attorney general of California, she was the first woman to ever do so, the first Jamaican American to ever do so, and the first Indian American to ever do so. So uh, she has in her career strike down a lot of firsts. When she took office, she did a lot of stuff that was for the homeowners. This was during the peak of the subprime mortgage crisis. She managed to settle a lot of people's home debt and managed to actually get millions of dollars of debt reduction for these people. I said millions, I meant actually almost 26 billion. She introduced something called a homeowner's bill of rights, which clamped down on a bunch of dishonest uh, mortgage practices, which was good. She also opened up more room for the attorney general to investigate these kinds of crimes. One of the more controversial actions she did as attorney general of California was when the Supreme Court case Brown v. Plata in 2011 went down. They declared that California's prisons were overcrowded and unsafe. She fought back against their decision to let uh, more prisoners out of this overcrowded prison systems, making the argument that there would be a loss of revenue. Many of you know, if you've ever read the new Jim Crow or watched the Radical Reviewer video about it that I was part of, the prison industrial complex has been a way to keep humans in near slave conditions getting paid well below minimum wage. Some of the most dangerous jobs in California, especially for fighting wildfires done by prisoners, get paid as little as a dollar an hour. These people who are disproportionately people of color uh, are worked for near no money and yeah, it's exploitation. And it is basically, as uh, Michelle Alexander said, a new Jim Crow. When confronted about this, she said that doesn't reflect her priorities, but hasn't really like apologized or elaborated or anything like that. Not really talked much about the prison industrial complex. As someone who used to be the Attorney General of California, she's got a lot of extremely controversial decisions under her belt that she really needs to answer for, and so far she has dodged. I'm hoping that the debates might open this up a little bit because it is a dangling easy target that is painted on her back. She also took no stance on a few bills that would have drastically reduced the prisoner rate. Uh, there was a proposition in order to reform the three strikes system, something that I feel like could be a whole video in and of itself, but Kamala Harris took no stance on it. There was also another proposition that would have redefined some nonviolent crimes as no longer felonies, but misdemeanors. She didn't take a position on those, making the claim that because her office was involved with the printing of the ballots, that it would be improper for her to take a public stance, something that previous attorney generals have uh, said is uh, complete bullshit. She did do a lot of effort to shut down a lot of predatory banks uh, that were doing those sort of predatory mortgage things, as I mentioned earlier. But there was one exception of someone she didn't prosecute. A bank called One West that had been accused of widespread misconduct. And the owner of that bank was Steve Mnuchin. She decided not to prosecute, and then when she ran for senator in 2016, Steve Mnuchin gave her $2,000 for her campaign. Uh, she's the only Democrat who received money from Steve Mnuchin. I don't know if you remember, Steve Mnuchin is in Donald Trump's cabinet. And look, there's a cat. In 2012, she also passed an initiative that would crack down on app developers in California, Silicon Valley, etc., uh, who weren't respecting the privacy rights of people, uh, implementing a fine of up to $2,500 per person for these kinds of violations. And now, uh, we can move on to another one of her controversies. I'm trying to like space them out, you know, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, complex. Uh, like I said, a lot of these things are like, if she even were able to explain why these things were out of her control in one way or another, that even might go some way towards it, uh, we'd still be skeptical because as Attorney General, she had a lot of power, 
But she just flat out just refuses to acknowledge these things or kind of dodges the question. And at that, we need to talk about Michelle Lale Norsworthy. Michelle Lale is a trans woman who used to be a prisoner in California. She filed a federal lawsuit against the state of California because they refused to give her uh, gender confirmation surgery, of which the federal judge ordered the Californian government to give her because it was a violation of her medical rights as a prisoner. The court even said in their decision that the uh, Californian correctional system was being intentionally indifferent to her serious medical need. Kamala Harris was the defense attorney for the government as attorney general of California. And she argued that because she was on hormone therapy that she was in no need of getting any surgery. It was not medically necessary and therefore she wasn't gonna get it. So Kamala Harris representing California appealed the decision and while the appeal, hey look, there's a cat now. While the appeal was in progress, she was actually released on parole very conveniently. And all of a sudden the trial was dropped because there was really no point anymore. In 2015, she started a Bureau of Children's Justice that focused specifically on crimes that had to do with uh, children, stuff like foster care, the Child Protective Services, things like that. Another controversial thing is that in 2015, she defended a conviction brought up on someone, even though evidence came through that the confession was false and planted in the transcript of the interrogation by the police. The federal appeals court threw out the conviction and told the attorney general, Kamala Harris, that she grossly underestimated the level of misconduct that had happened here. She did order an investigation against some oil companies for a major oil spill that happened in an oil pipe uh, that did lead to at least a few indictments and even uh, pushed for an investigation into a bunch of major oil companies for a price fixing scheme. Then got in controversy again when a California prison released Matrice Richardson from prison in the middle of the night where she was then uh, kidnapped and murdered. The Richardson family uh, actually begged the government in 2016 to try and, you know, investigate this case as a crime, which they refused to do until the family had to provide the government with 500 pages of evidence they had collected themselves, implying that there had been a murder. Be that as it may, in December of 2016, the government of California closed the case saying there wasn't enough evidence to suggest that she was murdered. So she just somehow ended up in the middle of the desert dead for no reason. Uh, as Attorney General of California during the whole thing with Backpage, she led the investigation into Backpage, which eventually would result in the federal legislation SESTA-FOSTA, which is uh, an entire thing that we need to talk about. So Backpage was a website that worked kind of like Craigslist, but allowed for sex workers to sell their services online. So sesta Fosta was a law put in place to ban such websites and make sure that the websites that did such things were uh, held responsible for the things that happened because there was a high profile case of human trafficking that occurred on Backpage. Uh, but this law is in no short controversial, and for good reason. Websites like Backpage had essentially uh, let sex workers do their work in safety, uh, relative safety anyway, as you can be in a criminalized field of work. It meant that dangerous clients could be marked. It meant that pimps were no longer necessary. A lot of the things that made sex work dangerous could be circumvented with things like Backpage. And this is a negative thing that can be thrown at all the Democratic candidates because everyone who could vote on it did except for Ron Wyden and Rand Paul. Also, while she was Attorney General, there was a lot of speculation that Obama might appoint her to the Supreme Court. So she's a very big legal mind in American politics, but she didn't run for like, Congress until 2016. By the way, it was a Senate seat that she won handily. So she's been senator now since 2017. It was very obvious from the beginning of her Senate career that this was a stepping stone towards her running for president. So she has been very visible and vocal at a lot of the key 
things that she knew would get Democrats riled up. And so a lot of things like Senate confirmation hearings and big events where Trump was trying to push one part of his horrible agenda or another, she was there speaking out against them. And I think this is a good thing. This She was wrestling for the microphone with people like uh, Cory Booker, who were all lining up their ducks in order to run for the White House in 2020. I mean, it's a little cynical, but in my mind, I think that there's nothing to criticize here. I think that standing up for the things she stood up for are pretty legit. Like she was against the Muslim ban, pointing out like racism and the Department of Homeland Security's approach to people from different countries, including criticizing the Department of Homeland Security's head, Kirstjen Nielsen, because she was preferring immigrants from Norway rather than other countries. And uh, when pointing out the racism of that, Christian Nielsen's defense was that she was not aware that Norway was a predominantly white country. Oh God, Donald Trump's government is so messed up. You know, she questioned Mark Zuckerberg. She went to one of the concentration camps that Donald Trump has set up at the border. Now this is a sign about how batshit the last few years have been. Do you guys remember the MAGA bomber? God, that wasn't even that long ago. But the MAGA bomber actually targeted Kamala Harris as one of his uh, victims. Luckily, uh, he was apparently an incompetent bomb maker, so nothing bad happened. But holy crap. And, and in February of this year, this is actually a very good thing Kamala Harris did, is that she stepped up to bat to defend Ilhan Omar. Uh, it was one of the least expected surprises that I was delighted to find. Kamala Harris being uh, very much one of the more right wing of these candidates in the field, uh, I was legitimately surprised that she decided to come to Ilhan Omar's back. So this is worthy of high praise. And I do think that this is very much in line about the thing I said about leadership earlier, and this is actually a pretty good sign, is that Kamala Harris is willing to go against the Democratic Party consensus if it means doing the right thing, which is nice. And on Martin Luther King Day 2019, she announced that she's running for president in 2020 to the surprise of literally nobody. And it's important to point out that she's only the third African-American woman holding office in all of history to have done so. So that's her political career. That's one thing. What does she stand on the issues? Well, as I mentioned with Elizabeth Warren's video and Bernie Sanders' video, that Kamala Harris, similar to much of the other candidates, doesn't have much in the way of like proposed legislation and like direct solid things she wants to do as much as uh, statements of principles. She wants tougher legislation on gun violence. She wants uh, legalized cannabis, as I said, good thing. Everybody editing Tristan here, I just wanted to add one quick little thing to this discussion about Kamala Harris and cannabis. And that is that in an interview when she talked about how cannabis can be really good for people, it makes people really happy. She uh, pointed to her Jamaican ancestry as part of that discussion, which um, her very Jamaican father uh, apparently did not appreciate. I don't know, I just thought that was a funny story. Universal background checks for people trying to get guns, that kind of stuff. Very, uh, very safe positions, honestly, weirdly enough, in the Democratic field these days. She supports raising the wage to $15 an hour and wants to do what every Democrat has said for the last 10 million years to lower taxes for the middle class. On environmental stuff, she supports a Green New Deal and her website wanted to point out that she did a bunch of pro-environmental stuff while she was attorney general, so... Uh, good credentials, I guess. Uh, when she was first announcing that she was running for president on healthcare, she said that she is for Medicare for all and like literally even was in an interview saying we need to like take medical care out of the uh, market, but then uh, has since turned on that is now kind of going more of a public option route. She has made a big deal about saying she wants to make sure that DACA recipients don't get kicked out of the country, which I think I don't know if there are any Democrats who are against that. Maybe Andrew Yang. I've heard Andrew Yang has a lot of Nazis following him. Uh, we'll see about that when we get to him, if we get to him. When it comes to like student loans and stuff, she wants to make sure that uh, student loans get lower interest rates, kind of wants to combat the high interest rate student loans. At the same time, wants to reform the Pell Grant system so that more people get Pell Grants, but has no position either way about like, you know, trying to make university free for anybody that's that's still that's that's still too far to the left of her she's a big defender of planned parenthood i would make the argument that uh planned parenthood is a 
unfortunate necessity in the United States, and that if the United States just had a public health care service, you wouldn't have to need Planned Parenthood in the first place. Planned Parenthood is still a, you know, not a government organ, and uh, relying on a private organization to provide the basics of medical care the government should be providing, I still think is quite a big issue. And while Planned Parenthood is people's primary source of family planning, it's always going to be under threat. Universal health care is the only way to really safeguard a woman's right to choose. I'm sorry, there's really no way out of that. Again, this is another very safe position, the Democrats, because I think that the only Democratic candidate who's running who is anti-abortion or wants to put restrictions on any abortions at all is like Joe Biden with his like thing. And even then he got owned so hard he had to reverse his own position. As far as like equal pay stuff goes, she is pro equal pay. Uh, let me just give you the words from her website that sort of uh, show the kind of language that comes up when you're trying to decipher what her positions are and plans are for certain types of issues. Mandating equal pay, working to ensure workers have access to paid family and medical leave, and making quality childcare affordable for working families. A statement that you can pin down to precisely no solid policy. And she has a large portfolio of racial justice issues that she wants to try and alleviate. She wants to make uh, renters uh, a little bit more secure, which she says is a racial justice issue. She wants to uh, get more black teachers because there's a sign that uh, black students, uh, if they have a black teacher before the third grade, they're much more likely to go to university. On top of that, she wants to make sure that there is more of a support network for people of color who want to go to university. And that would involve uh, more investment in historically black colleges and things like uh, more grants, more scholarships, things like that. So her policies are good, albeit vague, and in some areas they're okay, but they could be better. So the big thing I found through researching all of her positions and her history as a district attorney, as an attorney general, as a senator, is that uh, it's really hard to pin down what she believes about most things. There's a bit of a rupture between her words, which are good for the most part, and her actions, which is very checkered and full of uh, strange controversies that belie a value system that might be quite at odds in our post Black Lives Matter Democratic Party. And she still uses tough on crime rhetoric and when asked about the stuff that she's done as attorney general, as district attorney, she tends to dodge the questions. Something that she can't do forever if she wants to be president because there's gonna be a heck of a lot of debates where people are going to throw these questions at her and she's gonna have to answer one way or another or else she's gonna come off as kind of uh, uh, dishonest. In the case of her backpedaling on Medicare for all, there's a sign that she is quick to change her positions and that a lot of these positions are calculated to be very safe. I would definitely put her in the centrist camp, if only because the more progressive the rhetoric she gets, the more vague the thing she wants to do is. And uh, a lot of the solutions that she proposes for a lot of America's most deep and troubling problems, like economic inequality, student loans, racial injustice, uh, are usually market-based and uh, that uh, is that is centristy, at least centrist in like an American sense. In Europe, that would be straight up conservative. But then again, centrist is also a complicated category, and putting these people on the political spectrum can sometimes be complicated and intentionally so. A lot of political consultants who haven't updated their mentality for a post 2016 moment still seem to think that if you can keep your positions vague, but vaguely progressive sounding that different people will take their own political beliefs and sort of glom it onto the thing you're saying and assume that you mean what they mean. This is how Obama got elected and this is definitely what Kamala Harris is doing. By saying Medicare for all and then burying the lead about how she wants to talk about public options and is open to keeping the market around, that is a sign that like she wants to have someone who hasn't read everything and done uh, like over 200 lines of research as I have now, that 
uh, they can say, oh, Medicare for all. She wants public health care system. I like her already. But when, you know, if you pick a part at it and there's like a lot of like backpedaling and trying to get out of it. And so like, this is all the kind of stuff that like we need to be considerate of. Uh, I don't know how to recommend Kamala Harris's political positions because they're hard to define. So what that means is I think that her sinking or swimming is going to have to do with the debates. Uh, I don't think that this kind of political genuflexing without any hard positions is really going to resonate with people anymore. And when the debates come up and she actually gets questioned about her history as an attorney general, we'll see what happens. And this could all be because she comes from several worlds like congressional politics, the police system, the justice system in general, that she's a woman of color who has had to navigate these very white, very male spaces and maybe having a hard and controversial positions would hurt her harder than say, if Bernie Sanders were to do it. But this is why endorsing someone like Kamala Harris can be difficult because how do you know what this person believes if by social circumstances, the injustices that our world has towards race and gender, that she doesn't feel like she can even say what they are. And if you have an answer to that, well, that'd be great, because I don't. All right, before I go, I know this video has already gone for a very long time. I just want to say thank you all for getting to the end here. Uh, please contribute on Patreon. These take a lot of time to make, and I would really appreciate it, especially because I'm uh, quitting my day job at the end of June, and uh, 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 making rent and eating food might be a bit of a challenge after a few months, so please help out. If you want this content to stay around, uh, please, please, uh, uh, patreon.com slash stepbackhistory or paypal.me slash stepbackhistory. Uh, even as little as a dollar really, really helps. Next week, we're doing Pete Buttigieg.